Hey everyone, I'm glad you're here today as we are continuing our lessons about friendship. So we define friendship as using your words and actions to show others that you care. Uh, one of the biggest ways that we can use our actions to show that we care for others is keeping our promises. And that's what today's bottom line is. Friends keep their promises. Now, one way you might not think about this, because you might think, I always keep my promises to my friends. But let's think about how our parents are also people that we love and trust, and we have friendships with them as well. They are an authority in our life, but we also have friendship with them. So if we tell our parents, yes, I will clean my room, that's a sort of promise that you're going to do something. So what do we think we should do if we say something like that to a friend or parent? We follow through. And that's what today's Bible story is showcasing. One of the most famous friendships we see in the Bible is between David and Jonathan. And David made a promise to Jonathan to always take care of his family. So let's see how that turned out in today's Bible story. I'll see you back here so we can pray together. I'll see you in a minute. Welcome to the show! Welcome to the show! Hey everyone, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about friendship while we take a look at the story of someone who was not only a great friend, but also a great musician. Maestro, play us in! Welcome to the show! Welcome to the show! 
Welcome to the show. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. Sebastian, what's taking so long? Just a minute. Today, we're talking about friendship, which is using your words and actions to show others you care. You okay? No worries. Normally, Sebastian and I would be out here together, but Sebastian promised he was putting together something really awesome and fun. Working on it. Just like how he promised he'd be out here to help me host. Sebastian, you better not be goofing off. I would never. How did that get back there? Sebastian. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Ta-da! Sebastian has promised something awesome. Sebastian has delivered. That's your awesome surprise? It, uh, no. This is phase one of my awesome surprise. The cart of mystery. Ooh. It's mysterious, all right, but what is it? Yes. Is it something I can eat? No. Is it something scientific? There may be some science involved. <gasps> is it the Large Hadron Collider? The world's largest particle accelerator? I suppose that wouldn't fit underneath it. J just tell me what the surprise is. <sighs> That's it? I know, it doesn't look like much, but we gotta put it together first. Okay then, let's, let's make, make it. it! Assembly station's ready. Did you read the instructions? I gotta say, this does look kinda cool. Great, let's get started. First up, supplies. If you're following along at home, you're going to need two craft sticks, a wide rubber band, two smaller rubber bands, a straw, and a pair of scissors. Step one, use the scissors to cut two pieces of a straw that are about an inch and a half long. Step two, stretch the thick rubber band around one of the craft sticks. Step three, place your second craft stick on top and attach it to the first one with a small rubber band. Make sure it's on the same end as the straw. Secure the second straw with another small rubber band. And there you have it. You are now a proud owner of your very own harmonica. <laughs> to play, all you have to do is just move the straw up and down to adjust the pitch. Slide the straw to play higher or lower. Moving the straw pieces closer together causes the rubber band to vibrate at a higher frequency, which is what causes a higher note. It kind of sounds like a kazoo. But wait, there's more. Because why not stop at one awesome instrument when you can have your very own buildable band? I mean, we've got everything here. Like, we've got a shaker made from soda bottle with popcorn in it. I mean, we got a box guitar, tin can drum set. Ready to rock? You know it. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> You promised something awesome and fun, and you did not disappoint. I always keep my promises, <laughs> mostly. But speaking of promises, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the books of First and Second Samuel, which tell the story of David, who was called a man after God's own heart. While David was still a boy, God chose a man named Saul to rule over Israel. But Saul didn't listen to God. So... God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David as a sign that he would one day be king of Israel. Though David started out as a shepherd, he caught Saul's attention when he faced down a huge giant. After that, King Saul appointed David as both the leader of his armies and his personal musician. God blessed David and he won many battles. The people loved him. David even became best friends with Saul's son, Jonathan but the people loved David so much that Saul became jealous. He wanted to get rid of David. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. Hi. Today, we have a 
thrilling tale of friendship and promises. Promises broken and promises kept. As David grew in popularity, King Saul became so jealous that he gave orders for David to be killed. As David's best friend, Jonathan ran to warn David. My father is looking for a chance to kill you. Find a place to hide in the field. My father and I will come and stand there. I'll speak to him about you and then I'll tell you what I find out. Jonathan begged his father not to hurt David. Please, don't do anything to harm David. He hasn't done anything to harm you, and what he's done has helped you a lot. Saul, listen to Jonathan, and promised... You can be sure that David will not be put to death. Jonathan told David, so David returned to the palace. But Saul didn't keep his promise. One night... Saul's jealousy of David became so great that he picked up a spear and hurled it at David. Soon after, David went to find Jonathan. What have I done? What is my crime that your father's trying to kill me? Never! My, my father wouldn't kill you, he promised. I'm telling you the truth. Look, tomorrow's the new moon feast. Talk to your father while I hide in the field. If he's not trying to kill me, come and tell me. But if he is... I'll let you know. I promise. But in return, please, always be kind to me as long as I live. And never stop being kind to my family. I promise. Jonathan kept his promise. He returned to his father and discovered that Saul really did want to kill David. And the moment he found out, he warned his friend so David could flee far away. Years passed. David escaped Saul again and again until one day, Saul and Jonathan were both killed during a battle. David was heartbroken over the death of his best friend. He mourned for days, but eventually, David was made king in Saul's place. When David was king, he remembered the promise he made to take care of Jonathan's family. My friend Jonathan is gone. Is there anyone still left of his household? God has been very kind to me and I would like to be kind to that person as well. Jonathan's son Mephibosheth is still alive. He's unable to walk because of an injury he received as a child. Bring him here so I can keep my promise to Jonathan and show him the Lord's kindness. David had Mephibosheth brought to the palace and welcomed him with open arms. Who am I that you should pay attention to me? Don't be afraid. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll give you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And I'll always provide whatever you need. Some people looked down on Mephibosheth because he couldn't walk. But David made Mephibosheth a permanent member of his royal household, keeping the promise he made to his friend Jonathan all those years before. The end. Okay. That was pretty epic. I know, right? So, what's our part in the story? Well, to start with, we can remember how God has always kept promises to us. God promised to send us a savior and then followed through by sending Jesus. And just as Jonathan and David kept their promises to each other, we can make sure to keep our promises to our friends as well. Keeping your promises helps build trust between you and your friends. It can help friendships grow. Right. Like, say you borrow a toy or a game from a friend and promise to give it back the next day. Make sure you don't accidentally leave it at home. Speaking of, here's the pen you lent me. Thanks. Or say you promise to let your friend pick the next game when you guys play together. Even if you really don't like the game your friend chooses, it's important to keep your promise and give him a turn. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Friends keep their promises. Can I promise you a musical outro? <laughs> How about we just sing something instead? Yes. <laughs> so long, farewell, off we just say goodnight. We hate to go, but, but that's our show, all right. 
And now it's time for us to say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks Thank for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Just like in today's Bible story, my hope for you is that you can see and determine what are ways that you can show and be a trusted friend for others. Let's go ahead and pray together. God, thank you for the story about David and Jonathan. Thank you for this reminder that friends keep their promises. Please help us to be friends who are faithful and do what we say we'll do. Help each of us keep our promises and show others that we care. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we learned about one very important way to be friends with another. And that is to keep our promises with our friends. So let's get together next week and learn about another way. I'll see you then. Thank you.